Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Stone, back for another video, and today we're doing another career sim, and we got Shaquille O'Neal today. So to begin his career, Shaq, at 20 years old, he's going to be an 83 overall, and I just want to mention this, I also mentioned this in the last career sim, but if you haven't watched that one, I am doing these career sims on PC, so I do have mods in place. Some of the mods just do small things like the logos, they're just updated, they look a lot cleaner. And some of the face scans, like the headshot pictures, are updated. So for the, where should we go? Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie's pictures updated, Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, all the pictures are updated. Actually, not all of them, but a majority of them are. So we're going to see if Shaq is able to turn this franchise around and win a championship with them. Because he wasn't able to in his first run with them, but you never know, he might be able to do it today. So let's just jump into it. So at the end of the season, LeBron James is going to take home MVP and of course, Shaquille O'Neal, Rookie of the Year, 19.5 points, 9 rebounds, 1.1 assists, 1.1 steals, and 1.9 blocks, and he somehow shot 20% from 3. I don't know how that happened, but alright, we'll run with it. Nikola Vucevic, 6th man of the year, Giannis defensive, Michael Porter Jr. most improved, and Stan Van Gundy, he's taking home coach of the year. But even though Shaq had a dominant first season, the Orlando Magic won't be able to make the playoffs. And the Los Angeles Lakers are your NBA champions, and LeBron James, he's going to lead the way. So Shaq, he's up to an 89 overall, and you already know he's going to dominate this season. He's dropping 25 and 13 a game with two blocks, I'm calling it right now. So Giannis, he's taking home MVP this season, Cade Cunningham, Rookie of the Year, Brandon Clark, Sixth Man, Giannis, Defensive Player as well, James Wiseman, Most Improved, and Brad Stevens, he's taking home Coach of the Year. So Shaq doesn't make any All-NBA teams, but he's on the All-Defensive First Team this season, he was absolutely balling, dropping 20 points a game, 9.6 rebounds, and 1.8 blocks. So I might have been a bit off with the prediction. But he did shoot 10% from 3, so he's letting it fly. In Orlando, we're going to see massive improvement from them as they just finished as the third seed and they're going to be taking on the Washington Wizards. Based on how my predictions are going, I don't even want to bother to make one. Well, good thing I didn't make a prediction. We lost in the first round. And the Celtics, NBA champions, and Jason Tatum, finals MVP. So in year 3, we continue to see improvement from Shaq as he's going to jump up to a 94 overall. But I do have one issue with this team. Why would we sign another center in Hassan Whiteside when our two best players are centers and we don't really have a shooting guard? Like our shooting guard's Evan Fournier, which isn't bad, but I mean, we don't need any more centers. What are we doing? So at the end of the season, we're going to see Luka taking home MVP, Chet Holmgren, Rookie of the Year, Nikola Vucevic, Sixth Man, Giannis, Defensive Player, Malachi Flynn, Most Improved, and Steve Nash. He's going to take home Coach of the Year. And once again, we're going to see Shaq making the all-defensive first team while putting up 23 points, almost 12 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 1.4 steals, and 2.2 blocks. Some career numbers from him. And he also shot 8% from 3. Hold up. He shot 63s this year. Round of applause for 2K on their tendencies. Like, they did an amazing job. But I guess chucking up threes is going to help, as they're going to finish as the third seed. But we know what happened when they finished as the third seed last year, so I'm not too confident. But the Magic, they put up a fight this season, but they're going to fall in the conference finals to the Brooklyn Nets. You know Brooklyn, they're a dominant team, and they're going to win the championship. And Kyrie, he's going to lead the way. I feel like this is going to be a tough matchup in the next few years. The Magic versus the Nets... It's going to be a great rivalry. So headed into year 4, there's nothing else to say. Shaq, you're a 97 overall. You're going to dominate this season. You're probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year. I'm calling it right now, but this team's got to step up. The depth just hasn't been here. You've been doing your part. Now it's time for them to do the rest. So of course, Luke is going to take home MVP once again. Spencer Didwitty, 6th man of the year. Shaq, Defensive Player. I told y'all he was going to win it this season, 24 points a game, 11.8 rebounds, 1.4 assists, 1.1 steals, and 2 blocks a game. He was showing dominance this year. 
Um, I'm not even going to try that. And Greg Popovich, Coach of the Year. And along with winning Defensive Player of the Year, we're going to see Shaq make the All-NBA second team. And the Magic continue to do their thing as they're going to finish as the third seed and they're going to take on the Miami Heat. And Brooklyn, we might have to match up against them in the second round. So this could be a tough series. But we got to get past the Heat first because the last thing we want is a loss in the first round. But once again, Brooklyn's going to have our number eliminating us in six games and they're going to go on to win the NBA championship once again. And Kyrie, he's taking home back-to-back -back finals MVPs. So one thing I want to mention is, when I import these custom rookies, like the historic ones, I can't actually make them restricted free agents. So after their rookie contract is up, they can leave the team. And the Orlando Magic, for example, won't be able to match the offer. So while I say that, Shaquille O'Neal is going to leave the Orlando Magic. And he's going to go join the New York Knicks the Knicks. Now that's a tough scene, but this is a good young team. We've got Alan Wagner here, a 21 year old who I believe just won rookie of the year and he's already a 90 overall. So he'll be a good pairing with Shaquille. And then we got Isaiah Okoro here, Miles Bridges and Evan Mobley. So we should be able to make a pretty solid team here. Maybe even a championship team. Who knows? So for the third year in a row, we're going to see Luka Doncic taking home MVP. Spencer Didwitty, sixth man of the year. Shaq, he's taking home defensive player of the year on the Knicks this time. 25 points a game, 15 boards, 1.3 assists, 1 steal, and 2.9 blocks. His best season yet. Still not even going to try that. And Sidney Lowe, coach of the year. But even with Shaq's dominant numbers, he still can't make the All-NBA first team but he's still going to finish on the second. And also, just assume when he wins Defensive Player of the Year, he is also making the All-Defensive First Team. So just because Shaq left the Magic doesn't mean the rivalry ends, as New York is going to be taking on the Brooklyn Nets in the first round. Shaq, he's ready to get some revenge, and he wants to do it with a new team. He wants a fresh start. Well, we lost in seven games, so we continue to improve, I guess. The Lakers, NBA champions, and Anthony Davis, he's going to take home finals MVP. So the Knicks, they're looking even better this season. Shaq's coming off a career year. So the only thing we have to do now is win. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard, so just do it. And at the end of the season, your MVP is going to be Shaquille O'Neal. And he is putting up crazy numbers. 28 points, 18 rebounds, 1.5 assists, 1.4 steals, and 2.9 blocks a game. And I assume with those numbers, he's also going to be taking home Defensive Player of the Year. Of course he is. The Knicks have the MVP, the Defensive Player of the Year. How are they not going to win? They finish as the second seed. Brooklyn's the first. But we got the greatest player in the league on our team. We're going to finish this up real quick. We keep losing to the Brooklyn Nets. It doesn't matter. And they keep winning. This team is going to be the death of Shaquille O'Neal. He can't get past them. No matter what he does. No matter what type of season he has. Brooklyn keeps killing him. Okay. It doesn't matter what this team looks like. We could have all 99s. If we can avoid playing Brooklyn at any point in the playoffs, we're going to win a championship. It doesn't matter. But if we have to match up against them for even one game, we're not winning. I don't know what else I have to say. Like, if we have to play Brooklyn, we're screwed. So Giannis, he's going to steal MVP from Shaq. But that doesn't mean Shaq's not balling. Defensive player of the year, once again, 24 points, 14 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks. A bit of a slow season for him, not going to lie. And not only did Shaq have a bit of a decline, but he fell to the All-NBA third team. But that doesn't really matter. The team declined as well, and that's what mattered. But Brooklyn's the eighth seed. So there is a possibility we won't have to play them. But there is still a slight possibility that they could upset the Bucks and we will have to play them. So I'm very concerned. Well, we fell in seven games again. But at least it's not to Brooklyn. And the Celtics, NBA champions, Donovan Mitchell, finals MVP. So Shaq, 
He's tired of losing with the Knicks. He's left that franchise behind. He's left the magic behind. And he's ready for a new beginning in Charlotte. And he's going to be teaming up with LaMelo Ball. And these two guys are going to try to turn this franchise around and win an NBA championship. But I'm a bit concerned. LaMelo's only on contract for one more year. And if he leaves, we could be in a bit of trouble. But we're not going to worry about that right now. It's all about winning a chip. And in his first year in Charlotte, Shaq's going to turn the franchise around. He's going to win MVP with them, averaging 29, 17.5, and 2.6 blocks a game. And of course, with these numbers, he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year as well. Shaq's not messing around this time. And not only did the Hornets finish as the third seed, Brooklyn is not in the playoffs. It's a wrap. Championships in the bag. We're down bad. We're down tremendously. I don't even know what to say anymore. We are down unbelievably bad. So everyone on this team is down tremendously. After what happened last season... Well, we're not even going to discuss what happened last season. This team looks... Bad. Yeah. Our backup center is a 78. And our starting power forwards where? Nice. So at the end of the season, we're going to see LaMelo Ball taking home MVP, Shaquille O'Neal's teammate. That's pretty interesting. Our Rookie of the Year is also the 6th man of the year. And then Shaq, he's going to take home Defensive Player, 25.6 points a game, 14.5 rebounds, 0.9 assists, 1.4 steals, and 2.7 blocks. He was dominating in the paint this season offensively and defensively grant garrett most improved and lucas lucas he's gonna take home coach of the year and shaq he's gonna be making the all nba first team this season alongside his teammate lamello ball but we already knew lamello would be here he's taking home mvp and charlotte they're looking amazing the first seed 54 and 28 it's time to bring a championship home but the hornets even though they have the mvp and defensive player of the year they're going to fall in the second round to the fourth seeded Sixers. You hate to see it. And the Sixers go on to win the NBA championship. And Ben Simmons, he leads the way. But he still doesn't shoot any threes. You hate to see it. So we already know what this Hornets team can do. Shaq took home defensive player. Lamelo, he took home MVP. They're looking to run it back again this season. But not fall in the second round this time. They're going for a chip. So Lamello, he's going to be taking home MVP at the end of the season once again. Jay Parks, he's taking home six man. Shaq, he's going to take home defensive player, putting up 23 and 14.6 a game with 2.4 blocks. And Brad Stevens, he's going to be taking home coach of the year at the end of the season with, with a 63 and 19 record. But Shaq won't be dominating as much this season as he drops down to the all NBA second team. And this team saw a decline this season, falling to the 5th seed with a 47-35 and 35 record. What happened boys? We still have the MVP, we still have the Defensive Player of the Year, we should be able to do better than the 5th seed. Now let's at least get past the first round. We're down bad. The Hornets are down bad, Shaq's down bad, Lamelo's down bad, everyone's down bad. Except for Giannis, he's Finals MVP. So Shaq, he only has one year left on his contract, so there's a high probability he could be leaving after this season, especially with how this team is looking, because outside of him and LaMelo, it's not that great. Like, our third best player is only an 80 overall, and the depth just isn't here, so... So this could be another tough year for the team. So at the end of the season, we're going to see Luka Doncic taking home MVP, Tyrese Maxey, 6th man of the year, Shaq defensive player with one of his best stat lines of his career, 28 points a game, 18.3 rebounds, 1 assist, 1.4 steals, and 2.8 blocks. This man's unreal. I don't even know how to describe him. Warren Gordon, most improved, and Steve Nash, he's going to be taking home coach of the year once again. Of course, with that type of stat line, Shaquille O'Neal is going to be making the All-NBA first team alongside teammate LaMelo Ball. But this team, you missed the playoffs 41-41. and You had two members of the first team All-NBA on your team, and you couldn't even make the playoffs? Ridiculous. So for the second time in Shaquille O'Neal's career, he's going to be returning to the New York Knicks. 
but we got a few problems this time. Number one, Shaq has started the decline. He's dropped to a 98 overall. Number two, this team honestly doesn't look too much better, but we do have Lonzo Ball. So we have the superior ball brother here, but he's already 34, so this could be tough. So at the end of the season, we're gonna see Luka Doncic taking home another MVP. De'Aaron Fox, six man of the year. Shaq, of course, he's taking defensive player. It doesn't matter what team he's on, he's gonna win this award. Henrik Johansson, most improved, and Oliver Gordon, he's taking home coach of the year. But even with Shaq taking home defensive player of the year, we're gonna see him drop all the way to the all NBA third team. But it's all right, because the Knicks are making the playoffs. They're the fourth seed, Shaq, it's time to win a championship with Lonzo Ball, since you couldn't do it with Lamelo. Shaq, it's time to have a first round loss with Lonzo Ball, because you had one with Lamelo. Yeah, it's a tough scene out here. The Brooklyn Nets are NBA champions, and Gilbert Ware, finals MVP. And headed into this season, we're going to see the biggest decline of Shaq's career, as he's going to drop another 2 overalls to a 96 overall. So he doesn't have too much time left. We got to get him a championship quick. And Lonzo, he's already 35. We got to get this man another one quick. Assuming he's already won one. Maybe he hasn't. Let's go check quick. Lonzo, he is not an NBA champion yet. Shaq and Lonzo, they got to win it together. And they got to win it soon. So at the end of the season, we're going to see Leslie Boyd taking home MVP. Carl Lewis Jr., sixth man of the year. Shaq, defensive player, of course. And Luke Walton, he's taking home coach of the year. So once again, we're going to see Shaq making an All-NBA team in which he is making the third. But this team struggled, missing the playoffs, 38-44. and 44. It's a shame. It doesn't look like Lonzo and Shaq will be winning a rank together. And the Wizards, they're going to take home the NBA championship. And Ron Mercer, finals MVP. So Shaq, I'm going to give you one more year here. As you can tell, you're starting to decline. Everyone knows it. Lonzo, he's a shell of what he used to be. That All-NBA performer. And this team just doesn't look that great. So we'll see what you're able to do this season. But I don't think you're going to be able to do too much. Your stats might be good, but the team's success, I don't think it's going to be there. So we've reached that point where literally all these guys are auto-generated, except for Shaquille O'Neal, where he's going to be winning his final Defensive Player of the Year award. Well, maybe not final, but we're not going to see the next few seasons, as this team just wasn't there. Shaq, of course, making the All-NBA third team. So once again, the Knicks are unable to make the playoffs. Lonzo and Shaq, their dominant duo, just wasn't able to win a championship together. So I'll see you guys at Shaq's retirement because I don't think he's going to be doing too much more. Especially with the way he's declining. I only think he's got one more solid year left in him. And this one might have been his last solid year. Who knows? So after 17 years in the league, Shaquille O'Neal has finally decided it's time for him to retire. And he's going to finish with career averages of 22.4 points a game, 13.1 rebounds, 1.1 assists, 1.2 steals, and 2.3 blocks. Now, we're going to take a quick look at all of his game highs and all the awards he won throughout his career. So Shaquille O'Neal, he's going to be a two-time MVP, 13-time All-Star, four-time member of the All-NBA First Team, three on the second, five on the third, of course, Defensive Player of the Year 13 times, he was on the first team All-Defense 15 times, one on the second, and of course, he's going to be Rookie of the Year in 2021, he was on the first team All-Rookie in 2021 as well. His game highs, 61 points, 24 field goals made, 1-3, the most he attempted in the game was 3, it's 3 too many in my opinion, 19 free throws made, 32 rebounds, 19 offensive, 25 defensive, 10 assists, 6 steals, 15 blocks, and 55 minutes played. Now, we're going to compare Shaq to some of the other legends in the game. So Shaquille O'Neal, he's going to finish 13th all-time in total points with 33,066, 4th all-time in field goals made, 13,829, 4th all-time in rebounds with 19,264, 2nd all-time in blocks with 3,420, and he's going to finish 38th all-time in steals with 1,719. So Shaquille O'Neal had an amazing career. But he just could never win a championship because he didn't have a strong enough team around him. 
Like Shaq was constantly putting up 25 and 15 seasons with 2.5 blocks on the side, dominating the league, and sometimes he did have the great players beside him. LaMelo Ball won MVP alongside Shaq, I think multiple times. Even the Knicks, his first time around, had some decent players there, but they could just never win the championship, always being disappointed in the first round. So is this what would have happened if Shaq played in today's NBA? No, Shaq would win like 5 championships, and he would probably average about 40 points, dominating everyone. So yeah, tell me what you guys think down below. Thank you all for watching, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, follow Twitter, follow Instagram, you know the drill as always, and I'll see you next time.